Earlier today, we finally got the official invite. Xbox and Bethesda revealed the date and time of their big summer showcase. And in this, we get some details around the separate Starfield show that is going to be occurring. There's going to be another event that is going to follow this big summer showcase shortly thereafter. And we may have even gotten some confirmation that Avowed will actually be here, finally. In this video, I wanna go over all of this new info as well as give you a rundown on what you could actually expect from this event. As I think there's a decent chance this could end up being one of the most stacked summer showcases that we've had from Bethesda in a very long time. And although Xbox overall, of course, is hosting this one, I think Bethesda specifically could be making a really big appearance this year. But right off the bat, the big news is that on Sunday, June 11th, the Xbox Game Showcase will return. This is going to begin at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and although no explicit length was given, a pass leak came out suggesting that this thing would be about two hours in total, and it seems like that's a pretty good guess. In addition, they do describe how the Starfield Direct that is also coming on this day will be at least slightly separate. Immediately after the showcase, we'll be airing Starfield Direct, a deep dive into Bethesda Game Studios' highly anticipated sci-fi RPG. So it seems like this Starfield segment will have some degree of delineation. I imagine it'll all mostly be a part of the same stream, but perhaps a slight separation as they transition to the Starfield part. But they also go on to say, join us for some new surprises and first looks from our incredibly talented internal studios and many of our creative partners around the world. Which although this should not come as a surprise to anybody, this does confirm that there's going to be at least some new games being revealed here. They explicitly confirm we'll be seeing games we have never seen before, and I have a pretty good idea as to what at least some of these will be, as well as they share a few more details on the Starfield Direct as well, mentioning how we'll invite you inside Bethesda Game Studios to learn much, much more about Starfield, with tons of new gameplay, developer interviews, and behind-the-scenes insider information. So now, new Starfield gameplay being here isn't really much of a surprise, but I am definitely happy to hear developer interviews in the plural being mentioned. It seems like this isn't just going to be Todd Howard on stage, but instead several devs from Bethesda Game Studios. And I wouldn't be shocked if several of these are familiar faces from some of the other behind-the-scenes content they've made in the past. Although one thing I am pretty curious about is what type of behind-the-scenes insider information they're going to be sharing here. I think it'd be pretty awesome if they did another making-of documentary like what they did for Fallout 76, but of course for Starfield. This game has had an incredibly long development cycle, but Bethesda Game Studios has gone through a lot during the development process. Being bought out by Microsoft, quintupling in size along with opening up three additional studios, and of course having to deal with the pandemic. The development of their first new IP in 25 years seems like it has a pretty interesting story behind it, and I hope that's something that starts to get told. One of the other interesting observations here is that this is labeled as the Xbox Games Showcase, compared to the two last years when it was the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, which is interesting, and it does make me wonder if we don't see many Bethesda game announcements outside of Starfield. Although on paper, there are definitely some pretty massive announcements that could come out of Bethesda here. And this cover logo for the event is also pretty interesting. Now, on one hand, it seems like we have a slightly new logo or just icon for Starfield, which is fun. But also on the Xbox side, some people have been speculating, as this green effect surrounding the Xbox logo does somewhat resemble the green effect we can see in the Avowed logo reveal. So when I first read this online, I felt like it was a pretty massive reach. But at the same time, when you do look at the 2021 and 2022 showcase logo, Logos, they did tease the primary games being shown. In 2021, it's pretty straightforward with Halo Infinite and Starfield. You actually see Halo Infinite explicitly, although with 2022, it was slightly less obvious, although being still pretty clear as it does seem like there is a Starfield in the background. And of course, Starfield was the big thing at last year's show. So hey, maybe this is a nod toward Avowed having a large presence here. But in general, it seems quite likely that Avowed will be featured at this presentation, at least in some capacity. Over the past couple of months, we've had a few tidbits of news around Avowed. We just heard how the head of Xbox saw some good-looking builds of the game. Seeing very good builds of Avowed and stuff like, uh, we're in, like, I can see it. Which, okay, the head of Xbox seeing one of their work-in-progress games isn't really that crazy. But even beyond that, we saw how the Avowed logo recently seemed to be updated, at least based on some social media posting. Could this be a logo update before a big gameplay trailer? Outside of that, Avowed falls into this weird, unknown category. We got this leaked image of the game, and Jez Corden reported seeing some early gameplay that featured musket-like weapons. But although past rumors were that Avowed was targeting an early 2023 release date, I think we'll probably see we'll probably see the game revealed this year and then maybe like a launch maybe like 
quarter one, quarter two, uh, 2023, maybe? Obviously, that didn't end up panning out as early 2023 has come and gone. An explanation of that may come from Jason Schreier, as he describes how the game had a major leadership change in 2021 and reportedly saw several reboots during that time. But as far as official word on Avowed, there still is some hope, as Obsidian has confirmed we'll be hearing more soon. So now, unfortunately, this was said 690 days ago, so we may have some different definitions of soon. And one of the big factors here is when we go into this new summer showcase for Xbox, it's really just not clear if they're going to once again do that whole we're only showing games that are planned to release in the next 12 months or not. They did that in 2022, and although it was a cool concept at the time, knowing everything you see at the conference would be out by the time the next conference came around, it didn't work super well because a variety of things actually ended up missing that release date, like Starfield and Forza, and some of the other games just didn't really land. They were definitely a bit disappointing for some fans. But some more hope on the Avowed front, we heard from Jez Corden back in 2021 that Obsidian wants to release a game a year for the next seven years. Oh, and also Obsidian wants to release a game every year for the next seven years, they said. In 2022, we got Pentiment and technically the full version of Grounded did drop. So perhaps the target was in 2023, we could see Avowed and continue that streak. Just two months ago, we heard from Andy Robinson that Hellblade 2 and Avowed are the nearest games after Starfield. What's the focus of this summer showcase? Like, what is the next big game that they end with? I think um, I think the nearest ones for them are uh, Hellblade mm. and probably Avowed. Hellblade isn't that uh, big, they're, though, they're, is it? That doesn't end a showcase. No, but that, that's what they'll. That's the next big things for them that they'll be talking about. Mm. You know, from my understanding, those two are the closest. Andy Robinson is the current owner of VGC News and did kind of get the Starfield Direct announcement correct, so hey, maybe they're onto something here. At the very least, we should hopefully see something on Avowed. It coming before the end of 2023 seems optimistic, but who knows? Maybe it could be a surprise early 2024 release, and it could land quite perfectly right as people are starting to grow tired of Starfield. Although I gotta be honest, I think Starfield will be consuming my life for more than just six months. Although something that is definitely worth stating is there is this kind of bizarre timeline where we could perhaps see the Outer Worlds 2 before Avowed out, or at least that's been a part of the speculation. The Outer Worlds 2 actually started development before the Outer Worlds 1 released, at least according to this LinkedIn profile, where it does say that the Outer Worlds 2 has been in development for three years and eight months, which is pretty wild. If Avowed really is going through development difficulties, perhaps the Outer Worlds 2, if it's going a bit more smoothly, could end up jumping it and coming out first. Although no matter what happens, hopefully we actually see something from Obsidian at this showcase, and hopefully it's some actual gameplay this time. But of course, the big feature at this showcase is confirmed to be Starfield, with the Starfield Direct. Starfield has definitely come under fire lately, largely this just being due to the close association with Redfall and concerns over future Xbox mismanagement leading to a poor Starfield release. So now, I don't personally share those concerns, but it's definitely become a larger talking point in the community really just over the past couple of days. One thing I think could happen is another Starfield delay, just a small one from September to November, that wouldn't be that crazy. And if anything, I think the Redfall situation could make that a bit more likely as Xbox really needs Starfield to launch right. But overall, when it comes to Starfield and looking at this showcase, there really hasn't been a ton to discuss or even speculate on with this game. The leaks have largely gotten under control. And the only real noteworthy news to come officially from Bethesda over the past few months is this very interesting and kind of curious looking merch line launching for Starfield. But something that could potentially get you a little bit more excited for all of this is, between the Starfield Direct and the full release of the game, there's only going to be a little under three months of time. So I could see Bethesda revealing a lot of about the game and really hammering us with new info on a somewhat weekly basis. It very much so seems like with the Starfield Direct, that can be the kicking off point for what is going to become a marketing blitz. Because as of right now, we really don't know all that much about Starfield. Like yeah, there's a healthy amount of information out there, but not really. When it actually gets to the nitty gritty of the game, there's still a lot unknown. Although at the same time, maybe not. The Bethesda marketing for Starfield has been very strange in my opinion. They started a couple of behind the scenes series to kind of hold us over, but then they just kind of abruptly end or disappear. So frankly, I don't really know which direction they're going to be going with the marketing of Starfield, but what I do know is we're going to be finding out a lot more in just a little over a month. But one of the interesting parts about this all is, even though Starfield is massive, highly anticipated, it's only one part of what Bethesda is working on right now.
right now. Bethesda Game Studios going to the showcase has a ton of other stuff they could be announcing. As I reported late in 2023, it certainly seems like Skyrim is getting some kind of new paid mod system. We saw a new build go up on SteamDB titled Marketplace, likely similar to the Minecraft Marketplace where you can purchase community creations for money. But further, a former Creation Club member posted about Creation Club coming back. This was posted in early 2022, and even on top of that, Todd Howard has been consistently talking about additional ways for mod authors to turn things into a proper job. Hired a large number of modders that are now professionals. We want to support the people who are doing on their own so they can be professionals on their own. We're always looking at ways that we can make it like, hey, they can turn a career into it because mm -hmm. it's just awesome. And on top of that, we saw a new Skyrim update in 2022 that allowed you to see all of the installed content you had. And there was even an update on Switch that could connect to Bethesda servers. And this past week, Bethesda even announced that they'll be updating their wikis for creating mods for Fallout and Skyrim. And although this program seems to be taking a lot longer than I originally predicted, it seems like something is definitely going on with Skyrim. I mean, it's getting nearly daily updates on SteamDB. Typically, this is only going to happen when a new update for the game is being tested or worked on. With how controversial I think the return of paid mods will end up being, I just kind of assumed they would want as much space as possible between this marketplace feature for Skyrim and the actual release of Starfield, but perhaps at one point or another plans changed and we could see this finally getting revealed and released during the summer showcase. In a somewhat similar vein, there's also this Fallout 4 next-gen update. Almost nothing is actually known about this. All of the information just comes from these two sentences shared last summer. There are hopes of some new Creation Club content being shipped with this and perhaps being able to play Fallout 4 at above 60 FPS, but otherwise Bethesda has never commented on this since the original reveal of it. And Fallout 4 has also had a variety of SteamDB updates. We got this Beta 2 branch a while ago, then a New Vegas 2 branch, and now a De Chirico branch, which has been getting frequent updates, and it seems like this is likely the next-gen version in testing. De Chirico seems to be a reference to an Italian artist, at least as far as I can tell. And as far as what that New Vegas 2 depot was, I just really don't know. If anything, it seems most likely it was a troll job from Bethesda. They can name these depots absolutely whatever they want, so them naming it New Vegas 2 seems like it must have been intentional and probably just meant to mess with people. In the end, it was only actually on SteamDB for about 24 hours. But on the Fallout front, there also is this weird X factor of the Fallout TV show. I have no idea if something like this would even pop up at a gaming showcase, but we do know that the Fallout TV show recently wrapped filming. The lead actor posted about it on Instagram, and over the past year, we've seen a ton of leaked set photos for the show. It seems like it's going to feature more than one vault, the NCR will be here, the Brotherhood of Steel, and even perhaps some Enclave members, at least if this is the Enclave. They definitely look like them. It really seems like this is going to be a show that's going to deliver for fans, but it is also entirely unclear when this is actually dropping. With some of their past projects, Kilter Films has been pretty light on CGI, so hopefully there's a short editing time now that shooting is done, and although I think there is a real chance this could pop up at the showcase, at the same time, I don't really know, they could just drop a trailer some random day of the week. But to go along with the Fallout TV show, you have to imagine Bethesda does some kind of tie-in with Fallout 4 or Fallout 76. Edge Runners and some Edge Runners tie-in for Cyberpunk 2077 ended up being huge for the game overall, and I feel like Bethesda must have noticed that and must be planning something of their own. Fallout 76 would be the obvious choice because you can continue to keep things monetized with some of the available microtransactions on that game, but at the same time, Fallout 4 getting a next-gen update right around the same time a Fallout TV show comes out doesn't seem like a coincidence, so perhaps Fallout 4 also gets some new features or a slight tie-in with the show, but as of right now, Fallout 76 in general finds itself in a really weird spot. The game seemingly has five different developers working on it in some capacity. Bethesda Game Studios Austin and Double Eleven seem to be actually creating content for the game, while other support studios like Sparrowsoft, Skybox Labs, and Artbully are helping out with creating assets for that content. And although having a bunch of developers helping on one live service game isn't all that crazy, what does make it crazy is the updates are still really small and very few and far between. The summer update recently went into testing, and honestly, there's not a lot here. Through data mines, it is suggested that another expedition is likely on the way, and mods were supposed to come at some point, although maybe that's just not happening anymore. On the data mining front, there have been some textures for a Jersey Devil cryptid, and references to New Jersey 
itself, so perhaps an expedition there could be coming. But overall, I think Fallout 76 was likely heavily impacted by Starfield development. I wouldn't be shocked if many devs were pulled from Fallout 76 to get Starfield out the door sooner, and that's why we saw so many support studios pop up for the game over the past couple of years. With that said, there just isn't all that much content coming out for Fallout 76 right now, and it seems like Bethesda are even skipping a DLC roadmap for 2023, which is the first time they've ever done that. So though there is a chance we could get some big reveals for Fallout 76 at the Summer Showcase, I also wouldn't be shocked if they just give us a trailer for this update that's in testing and call it a day. But then there's also this upcoming mobile game. Yeah, like I said, Bethesda Game Studios is really busy right now. Back in 2018, Todd Howard confirmed that he wants Bethesda Game Studios to always have a mobile game in development, just like their AAA projects. And I think we'll always have a mobile game in development, just like we do on the, the larger AAA console PC side where we're overlapping stuff. We're doing that on mobile now. Really enjoy it, faster throw, but... And considering their last mobile release was Blades in 2019, I expect us to finally hear something on this front. The mobile game is likely going to be Spy Team. A former Bethesda Game Studios employee leaked that Spy Team was a passion project for Todd Howard and had some work done on it by Bethesda Game Studios Dallas, as well as during a recent podcast, Todd Howard mentioned how he is in love with their current mobile project. And we have a new mobile game that we're working on that we haven't announced yet that I'm in love with. Outside of those details, nothing is really known about this game outside of some inferences that can be made from the title of it. Although on the mobile game front, even though it seems like it's been underway for a while, we have no idea if that would even come out this year. It's clearly something they're working on, but who knows, maybe they're saving it for 2024 or 2025 as they have gap years after Starfield. But one of the big things I am left looking at with all of this Bethesda Game Studios content is just how much there actually is. It seems crazy to me that all, or at least most of this, is set to come out in 2023. Some of the things here are a bit more unique. The Skyrim paid mod stuff could definitely just get a random announcement one day and not actually pop up at the showcase, but then other things like the mobile game or even the Fallout 4 next-gen version could definitely shadow drop at the showcase. I could see them getting announced and then them saying, oh yeah, by the way, you could actually download this right now. Or maybe they're just not big enough. Depending on how stacked this showcase ends up being, maybe the Fallout 4 next-gen update isn't even a big enough thing to appear on it. It seems crazy to me that Bethesda Game Studios still have so much content in the works that seemingly will be popping up right in the vicinity of Starfield. Although perhaps they're just going to start spamming new releases over the summer to make that Starfield wait a bit more bearable. And one of the wild parts about this is that's just Bethesda Game Studios. When you look at Bethesda and ZeniMax overall, there's a lot more. We have heard how Redfall, everyone's favorite new Xbox game, is set to get some additional character releases. I even heard this personally at the preview event from the Project lead, but with how the Redfall release has been going, I wouldn't be shocked if these just randomly drop one day and aren't prominently featured at the Summer Showcase. Far more important are the two big games and largely unknown games at Bethesda Softworks right now. That is the new ZeniMax Online Studios game and Machine Games' Indiana Jones game that Todd Howard is executive producing. ZeniMax Online Studios really seems to be the top developer at Bethesda Softworks right now and has been for the past few years. I think this is largely because a lot of that time has been Bethesda Game Studios working on Starfield, but ESO has still had tons of positive reports come out about it over the past few years, and it's getting big new expansions on a yearly basis. It seems like Xbox and Bethesda recognize the success from this studio and have been heavily investing into it. They've opened new offices in Montreal, Austin, San Diego, and Madison. Now, it's not entirely clear which of these are working on ESO versus which of these are working on the new game, but there's definitely been a lot of growth at ZeniMax Online Studios, and as of right now, it seems like their new MMO has been in development for almost five years. So whatever this new MMO is, we know it's going to be some kind of new IP. It seems like some of the rumors suggest it's a sci-fi game, and maybe we're going to finally get a reveal of it at this summer showcase, or maybe not. We don't really know what the timeline is for a game like this. And then, of course, there is the Indiana Jones game. This is another one that we just don't know that much about. Todd Howard is executive producing the game, and Todd Howard said he felt like Machine Games would be a great fit to create the title, even over his own team at Bethesda Game Studios right now. Outside of the short teaser we got on the project, and it seems like this is largely to help recruit talent for the project, not much else is known or has been leaked. 
For the Indiana Jones game, I honestly think it's a bit less likely that this shows up at the showcase. If you didn't know, Machine Games, despite having their last major release in 2019, did help with Deathloop. So it's not like they've been sitting there only working on the Indiana Jones title. It seems like there was a bit of a sidetrack along the way. And based on LinkedIn profiles, it looks like some devs only actually began work on Indiana Jones in early 2020, so it may not be ready for showcase yet. And as I mentioned a bit earlier in this video, the showcase is technically titled the Xbox Showcase. So that does give me a bit of pause. It makes me wonder if maybe we're just not going to be hearing a ton about the new ZeniMax Online Studios game and the Indiana Jones game because those are more Bethesda. Perhaps this implies Bethesda is going to have a bit less of a presence outside of their Starfield Direct. But what I think could end up being at this showcase and actually make a big splash here is the new In Exile AAA RPG. We've had it loosely confirmed for a while now that In Exile Entertainment has two Unreal Engine 5 RPGs in development. And the first of these has seemingly been in development for about three years or even slightly more. The first RPG is reportedly named Project Cobalt, and it's a first-person steampunk RPG that aims to renew the RPG genre. In Exile are some of the best RPG devs out there right now, and although their previous game, Wasteland 3, was a top-down game, which definitely is going to alienate some of you, their games are great, and a proper first-person AAA RPG from this company would be a massive thing for RPG fans. I wouldn't be shocked if once their game gets revealed, for many of you watching right now, yeah, you, Alex. I can see this Project Cobalt becoming one of your most anticipated games once it's finally revealed. I have no idea if this is ready to be showcased yet, it seems like it's been in development for a few years now, so it's possible, and if they are targeting a release date in 2024, I could definitely see it making an appearance here. But there's actually been more rumors about what the other game in Exile is working on, as some have speculated that this is actually going to be a new Fallout game, and as crazy as that might sound, it's probably the most legit Fallout game rumor we have right now, and if you want to learn more about all of that, you can check out this video along with some of the other recent Bethesda leaks.